My friends, I know you can tell, I'm extremely happy to be here in Churchill today. I know that things haven't been easy for the past year and a half for members of the community. Ever since a devastating flood badly damaged the Hudson Bay Rail Line, land access to Canada's only deep water Arctic port has been cut off. You all know too well the kind of far-reaching consequences this has had on your community. Prices surged, projects had to be put on hold, plans had to be delayed. Families, students, workers and shop owners were left stranded. From the outset, as I told Mike, our government was determined to restore land access to Churchill. We wanted to establish a new model of ownership for the future that would empower the community and Indigenous peoples in the spirit of reconciliation. We know that nobody is more vested in the future of this rail and this port than the people who live here. Our goal was to find the right partners to see this project through. And after more than a year of hard work, our government successfully facilitated the deal struck between Arctic Gateway Group and the former owner. The rail, now, the rail line is now partly owned by the community. And on that note, I need to acknowledge the incredible work done by a proud Manitoban, my friend, Minister Jim Carr, on this file. Thank you, Jim. See, this has been a model of community empowerment and economic development for others to follow. Two great Canadian companies came together, Fairfax Financial and AGT Foods, along with community leaders, to ensure the future of not only the rail line, but also this port. Racing against the changing seasons, this new partnership group faced its first big challenge, fixing the rail line before winter. And my friends, as we saw last night, they were more than up to the task. This means that families will once again be connected to each other that tourists will visit the polar bear capital of Canada and that the port will resume its operations. And that's just not a line, polar bear capital of Canada. As we drove in from the airport half an hour ago, I spotted my, pol my first polar bear in Churchill. So <laughs> with this new deal, Churchill will have full control over its future. Now, I want to take this moment to thank the people of Churchill for your patience. I know times have been incredibly tough, but the resilience and determination you have shown has been inspiring. You organized town halls, you made your voices heard, and when things weren't moving fast enough, you put pressure on everyone involved. You did everything you needed to do to make sure we got this done and that we got this done right. And today, I'm happy to announce that the long wait will now be over. The rail line is expected to resume its regular operations, servicing both passengers and freight by the end of November. This, yeah. <laughs> this is your victory. We owe the progress we made to your dedication, hard work, and perseverance. Today's announcement marks the beginning of a new chapter for Churchill, one where people can enjoy everything their town has to offer and can share it with visitors. La voie ferrée permettra également d'attirer des nouveaux investissements qui sont de plus sont plus que nécessaires dans la communauté et de créer de meilleures occasions pour les gens et les petites entreprises d'ici. Par exemple, Bell voulait installer la nouvelle génération d'internet par fibre optique à Churchill. Mais pour apporter le, tout le matériel requis, il y avait besoin d'une voie ferrée en fonction. Alors quand le service repre, reprendra, la ville va attirer plus d'investissements comme celui-là qui permettront à la communauté d'aller de l'avant. Cela dit, notre soutien ne se limite pas à mettre la voie ferrée entre les mains des nouveaux propriétaires et de fournir les fonds pour la rétablir. 
nous nous sommes aussi engagés à verser 43 millions de dollars sur 10 ans pour veiller au bon fonctionnement de la voie. Et nous continuons à faire des investissements judicieux et ciblés dans la communauté. Today, we are also announcing more than $3.8 million towards 40 projects that will increase tourism, provide skills training, help offset the freight costs stemming from the rail line closure, and open the door for even more investments in the community and more opportunities for residents. We're also taking unprecedented steps to fight climate change. Here in Churchill, you've seen firsthand what climate inaction looks like. And your community has been at the forefront of the effects of climate change. That's why last week we announced our plan to put a price on pollution. Starting in 2019, Manitobans will directly receive a climate action incentive. This incentive will help Canadians adjust to an economy in which pollution is no longer free. I will also note that there will be a 10% top-up for people living in remote communities like Churchill. In Manitoba, this means that a family of four will receive, on average, $339 every year. Le reste des recettes que nous allons recueillir au moyen de la tarification de la pollution permettra de financer des programmes d'efficacité énergétique pour les petites et moyennes entreprises, les municipalités, les universités, les écoles, les hôpitaux, euh, les, les organisations sans but lucratif et les communautés autochtones. Nous pourrons ainsi aider à protéger l'environnement, à créer de l'emploi et à renforcer l'économie locale. Today is great news for the people of Manitoba and indeed all Canadians for generations to come. I'm going to end it here because I know I want to take some questions and I'm looking forward to the community celebration shortly. But I really want to say thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for working with us. Thank you for opening this new chapter on a brighter future for Churchill and for Manitoba. Merci beaucoup, mes amis.